Mexico, but it's a beautiful about it. You've got the natural base there, which is huge, and Pacific Ocean, and uh, Torrey Pines, and all kind of great stuff right around San Diego. But I like Jacksonville. Give me Jacksonville over San Diego. Thank you. And you also have <laughs> got Coastal going to Hawaii. Is that right? That is the buzz. There are a couple of destinations. Now, if any of those projections are to be believed, yeah, Coastal is in the Hawaii Bowl against, I think, San Jose State, which would trump, pardon the pun, which would trump your trip to San Diego to cover the Tigers if that actually worked out. But we're a long way from Sunday to if that's actually legitimate or not. But, yeah, uh, the Sun Bowl, excuse me, the uh, Sun Belt has so many teams. We talked about Clemson sort of being an outlier having to go fill a slot the, the Sun Belt's going to send 12 of its 14 teams bowling, assuming that James Madison gets a spot, which I think we now believe they will. So they've got to find spots for all these teams. And ESPN, I guess, in its infinite wisdom, if Brett McMurphy is to be believed, uh, they're going to send them out to Hawaii. And what a way to, to book in your first season as head coach at Coastal for Tim Beck. First game at UCLA in Los Angeles playing the Rose Bowl. And again, if that is to be believed, you wrap things up with a, a trip to Hawaii mm. for the uh, for the Hawaii Bowl right around Christmas time. The only question is for football is who's going to be behind center. They've lost two quarterbacks in the span of 24 hours. And the Grayson McCall one, I think, is a little bit surprising because of what you mentioned, Phil, with all the injuries he's had, that he's going to take another season of playing college football. And that may have deterred him from trying to get into the NFL draft. My biggest concern about Grayson, and it has been for years, I just hope he's healthy. Uh, that young man has, has been such a, a great ambassador for Coastal Carolina football. I've enjoyed watching him play for the last several years that he's been here. But the one thing that has always hampered him has been he's been injury plagued. And unfortunately, some of these injuries have been mighty severe, including the one that has kept him out the entire back half of the season since the Arkansas State game. I just hope he's healthy and doesn't wake up when he's like 40 years old and have severe problems because of all the injuries and all the hits he took in college. Yeah. I wonder if Tim Beck's going to look heavy into the portal for his next quarterback. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of pickings in there if you want to go portaling. And just right here, I mean, Hunter Helms, would you look at Hunter Helms possibly to go to Coastal Carolina? He's available. Or you can shop around and find you know, any number of different quarterbacks who would be available. Exactly what you're looking for, time will tell. Uh, Brad Crawford of 24-7 Sports reported today that should K.J. Jefferson of Arkansas enter the portal, that South Carolina would be the favorite to get him. Uh, don't know what he's basing that on other than the fact that uh, Dowell Loggins uh, wants to Arkansas. Um, now, help me here. Was Loggins – I know he was – he wasn't the OC QB coach at Arkansas, was he? Wasn't he tight ends coach? There, I'm trying to think if he ever worked hands-on with with Jefferson. I I don't recall that that was the case before he left Arkansas. I'd have to go back and retract the seasons. But anyway, somebody you know he's drawn a conclusion that that's going to happen. Of course, Jefferson put out after on three and two four seven put out that he was going to be entering the portal. John he put out that no decision's been made yet. So. You know, I don't know if they're jumping the gun or they've got the information and went with it and he's just not ready to formalize it. This was as of uh, late this afternoon. But let's talk a moment about Spencer Rattler and his departure from South Carolina, how his impact on the South Carolina program in his two years was immense. Uh, in his two years at South Carolina, he passed for over 6,000 yards. In his two years at South Carolina, he had the number three 
and number seven best passing seasons in Gamecock football history. He, of course, on the field was a tremendous leader for the Gamecocks, and off the field, he was he wore the brand well. He did a really good job representing uh, his program in his university with the various things that he did. So that was a win in every manner for South Carolina, getting him out of the transfer portal, John, a couple of years ago. Here's some other numbers on him. Uh, he passed for 3,186 yards and 19 touchdowns this season, completing 69%, eight interceptions. At williams Bryce Stadium this season only, just at home, passed for 2,015 yards and 17 touchdowns, 74% completion rate at home, and only four interceptions. He loved williams Bryce Stadium. In 22, transferred from Oklahoma, he threw for 3,026 yards, 18 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. He completed 66%. So in his two seasons with two different offensive coordinators and quarterback coaches, he passed for 6,200 yards, 11 touchdowns, and 20 interceptions. He leaves as a number five all-time leading passer in two years. I mean, had he stayed four years, he would have obliterated that record. Counting his two years at Oklahoma, Rattler finished his college career ranked 97th all time with 10,807 passing yards. He threw 77 touchdown passes to 32 interceptions. He completed 68.5% of his attempts in his career. So I think he lived up to the hype. Now can he take it to the next level? Is he NFL quality in your opinion? I think so, and I think one thing he did is sort of resurrected the opinion around him, I would believe. And outside of Connor Shaw, I'm not sure there's a quarterback in South Carolina that has had a greater impact during his tenure than what Spencer Rattler did. And I think he'll probably – he'll leave with a little bit of a bittersweet taste in his mouth because this season didn't go well. But, I mean, he did win at Clemson last year, did beat Tennessee, just had some – terrific wins and I think Phil when he came to South Carolina he was looking for a second chance and an opportunity to wipe the slate clean and prove that he can be an NFL caliber quarterback and I think he did just that and imagine if he had had a healthy offensive line healthy wide receivers in any semblance of a running game this season I think you're looking at three four more wins perhaps but he played especially at home I think you hit a nail on the head he was certainly great at williams Bryce Stadium. And Gamecock fans should have nothing but gratitude for Spencer Rattler for picking them because he could have gone a lot of different places but felt comfortable with Shane Beamer and wanted to come back and I think did a nice job in sort of reshaping himself. And I would think in the image of NFL scouts, and you heard towards the tail end of the season, Shane Beamer was talking about some of the things that NFL scouts were telling him about Spencer Rattler. And one of the things that kept popping up was his resiliency. In face of a lot of adversity, I mean, you only have to flip the tape on against Clemson or Georgia or some North Carolina game to start the season to see what kind of beating he took. And this kid just kept getting up every single time. Kind of reminded me of the old Rocky films. Hmm. Knocked him down, but he'd stand right back up. I mean, I enjoyed watching him play for two years. And it's it's hard to, to not root for a guy like him because you're right. He was a great player for South Carolina on the field and a great ambassador for them off the field. All right, and DeKerion Joyner has just put out his tweet that he is going to the NFL draft as well. So DeKerion Joyner, who began his career in 2018 at South Carolina, so just figuring it up. So 2018 uh, must have been his redshirt year, and then he played eight games in 2019, and then 2020 doesn't count as a COVID year. And then he played in 2021, 2022, in 2023 so that's four years that he's played so i guess because of 2020 this was his sixth his sixth season this year yeah well okay, okay 2018 he was redshirted he played one game and then 2019 was the first year he actually played one he played eight games and then he played in 2020 2021, 2022, 2023. So he's played five seasons, not counting the red shirt. Six years, one game that first year won't count against him. And then five more seasons, but the 2020 season 
See, I thought this was his get back 2020 COVID season this year. What am I missing? Because he's four full seasons. Yeah. yeah. You talked about in your run through, he's been, as Pat pointed out. So my this question is, season. why is he saying I'm, I'm I'm leaving for the draft? He doesn't have any options left, does he? Did he have enough? Did he have another year of eligibility? That's what I'm trying to get at. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Who knows? I've seen kids play seven, eight, nine, 10, 15 years in college sports anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Who well, knows how many years of eligibility these young men and women have anymore? Yeah. And it has been confirmed the Gamecocks will not get a bowl game, right? Do we know that for sure? Or are they one of the five win teams that might get an invitation? Yeah, they're not going to get a bowl game. No. So it's not him announcing like he's going to sit out the bowl game. No, no, no. They're not going bowling because, um, there aren't enough spots. If they have to go to five and seven teams, there are too many teams ahead of them APR wise who would go before them. So got it. And it's I'm, been determined. And I'm curious, I don't I don't mean this, I'm not throwing shade. I just don't know how else to phrase this question. Mm-hmm. What position is he going to enter the draft at? Yeah. Running back, quarterback, wide receiver, maybe a gadget Swiss player, Army knife. special teams. Yeah. He could do a little bit of everything. Taysom think Taysom Hill, I think, mm-hmm. would be probably what if I'm if I'm to carry on, that's who I sort of model my uh my hopes in the nfl after because swiss army knife is a great example and phil you want to talk about a master and sort of the guy that i think usc to, to borrow their nickname you want to find someone who the spirit of a gamecock i don't know that you can find a better example of that than to carry on joiner because here's a kid that clearly could have gone several different places and played considerably more than he did at usc but he wanted to be there and he's the guy that, that i think uh, gamecock fans much like spencer rattler you want to talk about a debt of gratitude towards uh, the carry on joiner, certainly from our state, too. He's another kid that you hope does well in the professional ranks. Yeah, I mean, you have to admire um, the way he approached his business, the way that uh, he took every move uh, professionally and handled his business quietly within the locker room and was always putting the team ahead of self to try to help the Gamecocks in any way because he is a multi-talented guy. So when they needed somebody to play receiver, they looked at him. When they needed somebody to play quarterback, they looked at him. When they needed somebody to play running back, they looked at him. And Clemson would have taken him as a safety. (laughs) And if Taysom Hill's the comparison, that's a heck of a career. He's in his seventh year so far with the Saints and recently signed a four-year, $40 million contract. I think that was a year, maybe two seasons ago. So point being, he doesn't even get in there every play, but he does all over the field as, as that kind of gadget player, Swiss Army knife. But he's made himself quite a career. So, yeah, if to, if to carry on, that, that'd be that'd be heck of a career. It'd be great. All right. So we got a lot of stuff to go over. Uh, David Shelton joined us here after the bottom of the hour break to preview another uh, high school football championship game coming up this week at uh, South Carolina State uh, University beginning tomorrow. Tomorrow's the AA championship at 7 o'clock. We did that one last night. Tonight, a championship game johnsonville and christ church friday at two o'clock and then we'll be in orangeburg tomorrow night and friday night uh, as our uh, coverage of the state championship games will play out through a saturday and don't forget Furman. Furman has got a playoff game coming up on um saturday afternoon at paladin stadium at one o'clock is against ut chattanooga they had a bye last week chattanooga uh, won their game to advance to play their Southern Conference rivals. So we'll keep a close watch on that moving forward, try and get Coach Hendricks on with us here uh, this week as well. So got a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, before you leave us, Chris, Gamecocks handled Notre Dame last night at home, 15,000 plus, and Clemson goes to Alabama and takes care of business. What about those two wins? Well, I thought USC's win was awfully impressive considering that was a game they couldn't win with their offense. They actually clamped Notre Dame down defensively. We talked a little bit since that tip off at 7 o'clock last night during the show that there were sequences of that game where I thought they played about as good a defense as they possibly could play. And you heard the players, Michi Johnson and also B.J. Mack in the postgame, talk about hanging their hat on defense and Lamont Paris saying the same thing. That's a good win for them. And if they don't overlook George Washington, they should be 7-0, and you would hope, going into the uh, matchup at Clemson next week. And how about the Tigers? I mean, you hit on the uh, biggest surprise, I think, of the night, them going to Alabama. Alabama had one of the uh, nation's longest active home winning streaks, 19 games. And the Tigers just went into their house and took it to them, especially in the second half. 
and I've been awfully impressed with what I've seen out of Brad Brownell's team. I think they took last year personally during the offseason, felt like they were an NCAA tournament team and did not get an invite. They're trying to take it out of the committee's hands this year and, and win their way in without any doubt this season. And it would be awesome if next week both of those teams, if, if Clemson can beat Pittsburgh on the road this weekend and Carolina can take care of George Washington, it would be great to have two undefeated men's basketball teams going head-to-head early portion of November, uh, excuse me, of December next week. Yeah, I would think so. And I would imagine that Little John would be uh, packed and rocking it should be. for that. Yeah. All right, and so tonight, Coastal Carolina is uh, taking on Upstate. Uh, Coastal needs a win in the worst way. Upstate's a good team. Last uh, 30 seconds here, give us a quick preview. Upstate's a very good team on the defensive end field. They average about 10 steals a ball game. Shauna Clears have struggled taking care of the basketball. I think that's the biggest part of this contest. Can Coastal handle the pressure from a USC Upstate and uh, maybe find a way to pull out a win? Because you're right, this is a team that's lost four in a row and desperate in need of a uh, victory here this evening. This will be a good one with Minthrop rolling in here on Saturday. Okay, Chris, have a great call on the Chanticleer Worldwide Radio Network. I appreciate it, guys. We'll talk tomorrow. Okay, buddy. Chris Bergen, basketball voice of the Chanticleers. We have got uh, David Shelton coming up after the break, and then we'll get to some phone calls, 888-898-2525. Be right back. Point Weather is made possible by our friends at Palmetto Citizens Federal Credit Union on 107 The Point. And here's tonight's forecast. Clear and cold overnight with low tip dipping down to 30. Keep an eye on the pets. Tomorrow, a nice blend of sun and clouds with a high reaching 59. The rain moves in for Friday afternoon and unfortunately will continue through the weekend. It'll be warmer with temps in the mid to upper 60s. I'm Brian Leonard with your on point local weather. This is Ian with AccuClean. With the holiday season and gatherings with friends and family quickly approaching, now is the perfect time to get your carpets, rugs, and upholstery cleaned. AccuClean is a veteran-owned and local carpet cleaning company located in the Midlands for over 20 years. Call AccuClean today at 803-957-1202 to make sure your carpets are refreshed this holiday season. Once again, that's AccuClean at 803-957-1202. We hope to see you soon. With SRN News, I'm Keith Peters reporting. The Israeli military says 10 Israelis and four Thai nationals have been released from captivity in the Gaza Strip and have been returned to Israel. It was the sixth such release by Hamas under a ceasefire between Israel and the militants. Israel is to release 30 Palestinian prisoners later. International mediators are racing to extend the truce deal to facilitate the release of additional hostages held by Hamas. The ceasefire is set to expire early Thursday. The Japanese Coast Guard says a U.S. Air Force Osprey based in Japan crashed during a training mission off of the country's southern coast, killing at least one of the eight crew members. Japanese Coast Guard spokesman Kazuo Ogawa says the cause of Wednesday's crash and the status of the seven others was not immediately known. This is SRN News. There's more than one kind of customer when it comes to Shooter's Choice. First, there's the customer who knows what's what, has a pretty good idea of what he or she likes. You're looking for a few things. First, a good selection. Yep, Shooter's Choice has a huge selection. Firearms, ammo, accessories, optics, even gun safes. You're looking for good and fair pricing. Oh, yeah, Shooter's has been around as your local stop forever because they treat you right. And how about customer service? Absolutely the best you'll find anywhere. The folks who work at Shooter's Choice are shooters and hunters just like you. They know their products. They can answer your question. And that brings me to the other type of customer, someone maybe more like me. No expert for sure, but wants to learn from the right people. I don't need some big box store guy who works in the shoe department half a week, sporting goods the other half. I need the experts at Shooter's Choice who will treat me right, answer my questions as simple as they might be. They'll make my experience excellent. Online at Shooter'sChoiceSC.com or visit them in person on Sunset Boulevard in West Columbia. Make it your first choice, your best choice. Make it Shooter's Choice. Senator Lindsey Graham is harnessing the power of clean energy to create a stronger America. Building a clean energy economy will create high-wage American manufacturing jobs and expand opportunities for hardworking families to thrive and prosper. Investing in clean energy innovation will strengthen our electric grid, 
and make it more resilient against natural disasters and foreign hackers. Senator Graham understands that clean energy is vital to America's economic and national security. To become energy independent, America needs an all of the above energy strategy that is not hindered by bureaucratic red tape. America can lead the world in clean energy innovation. We can win the future. Call 202-224-3121. Thanks Senator Lindsey Graham for building America's clean energy economy and strengthening our national security. Paid for by the American Council of Engineering Companies of South Carolina. All product names, logos, and brands are used for identification purposes only. Prescription products require an online consultation. Restrictions apply. Before you purchase generic Viagra anywhere, you have to try this trick. Um, it's called Friday Plans, and it's the only way to get 100 milligram generic Viagra for just 87 cents a tablet. How much does it usually cost? At CVS, nine tablets of 100 milligram generic Viagra cost $406. That's about $45 per tablet. God. Yeah. At Walgreens, it's $46 per tablet at Friday Plans. They offer the same 100 milligram tablets for as little as 87 cents each. How did you get that? Just go to tryfridayplans.com. Just select why you need generic Viagra, the quantity you need, and the dosage. The whole thing took me less than two minutes. They ship your tablets in a plain white package within two to three days. The prescription and shipping are free. You got to try it. It's tryfridayplans.com. Once again, it's tryfridayplans.com. 11 years of the best high school band. Busy night on Sports Talk. We'll get to those phone calls here in a little bit. Hang in there with us. High school championships coming up. Top of the hour on the other side. Another edition of Chalk Talk. Last one of the so-called regular season. They'll come back with us during the bowl season. Chuck Reedy and uh, Ellis Johnson. And then 730, 735, Coach John Combs with the South Carolina Basketball Coaches Association. Former high school coach. AD now at Spring Valley, and we're going to talk high school basketball around South Carolina on a weekly basis. May have a guest occasionally, another high school coach, talking about their particular team. As high school basketball in our state is something that really should not be overlooked. I know football dwarfs it for the most part, but it should not be overlooked. We have good teams, good coaches, and good players. So we got that coming up tonight, and of course, plenty of recruiting. Right now, though, let's turn our attention to the high school championships at South Carolina State. They commence tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, continue through Saturday. Welcome in David Shelton. High school sports report, Charleston Post and Courier. His close friends call him Bib for best in business. What do your enemies call you? Uh, I don't think I can say that on the radio. (laughs) You don't have any enemies. I don't know anybody oh, yeah. that doesn't love David Shelton. I mean, I wouldn't call them enemies, but I have people who tend to disagree with my opinions at times. But that's okay. <laughs> that's you know, I don't, I don't take it personal unless they make it personal. No, but uh, that nah, that doesn't doesn't happen much. I understand. You can't take it personally. All right, so let's talk about the one A game next on our agenda for the championship uh, schedule, and we've got. Uh, Christchurch, we've got Johnsonville. How do you see this one playing out? Well, it's a rematch of last year's game. And, and, you know, famously after the game, Johnsonville coach Ken Cribb said, uh, we're the public school state champions of Class A because they lost to Christchurch, you know, the private school. And now they got the same thing. Um, he's not making a big stink out of it this year. It's, it's you know, let's play the game and blah, blah, blah. But, um you know, I, I think it's two really good teams. I mean, what, what Johnsonville has done in the playoffs, you know, they beat a really good Lamar team, really kind of shut them down one by two. And then they what they did last week, they went to Bamberg, who's a really good team, mm-hmm. and, and and gave up one touchdown. They, they, they won 20 to 10. They gave up one touchdown. And, you know, that tells me that their defense um, – now, now, Bamberg is – a little easier to defend because they're they're more of a run heavy team. Christchurch is really balanced. They've got a really good running back, Deshaun Reader. 
who I think is committed to Boston College still. Um, you know, he's he's a big time running back, and they've got a quarterback who's a first year starter, but is thrown for 2,500 yards and 37 touchdowns. And they got a little receiver, Phil, named Jackson Rep. And he's a junior, and he's like 5'8", 160 pounds. This dude has 57 catches on the year, 26 for touchdowns. I mean, that's and, – and he's got four kick return touchdowns. So this, this dude's got 30 touchdowns, mm. and, and he's not a big-time prospect. He's a junior. I, I think he plays baseball, too. Um, but – I mean, that's a lot of touchdown catches on, on that. I mean, almost 50% of his catches are touchdowns. Um, so I think Johnsonville's defense will have to, you know, they've got a challenge uh, where, where they can help themselves is if they can have success running the football. They have a really good quarterback in Malik Shippey, um, who is a four-year starter and is a really dynamic player, can throw, run. They like to run the football, but they can throw it. Uh, big receiver, Travis Wilson, running back, Neil Martin, who's also a linebacker. Their defense is, is physical, very fast, um, but they'll be challenged. I mean, it, it's a lot like the game last year where Johnsonville had some weapons and they had success, but they, they couldn't stop Christchurch. And, you know, it ended up, ended up kind of being like a three-touchdown game. Um, but if Johnsonville's defense can, can slow them down, uh, I think they got a chance, um, but but it's going to be a very difficult challenge. Christchurch's offense has been really, really good. They they score a lot of points. Okay, and so we've come to that point where people just want to know what does Shelton say about the 1A championship? Shelton says. Well, you know, if anybody in Johnsonville is listening to this, those will be the people that, you know, we just had that conversation uh -huh. about people don't like me. Well, they ain't going to like me tonight. But um, I, I uh, you know, you forced me to pick a winner. I mean, you pay me major, major dollars major. To, do the, to do these picks. So I'm going to say uh, Christchurch is going to win the game. I think it'll be very competitive. Um, but I, I'm going to take Christchurch to win. Christchurch to win it again. They've got a bunch of championships up there, don't they? Yeah, they, you know, remember uh, before Quinn Hatfield took over, Don Frost was there and they mm -hmm. won like 50 games in a row um, at Class A. And then they went to Double A in realignment and did not win state championships. Now they're back in 1A. And with the multiplier, they're probably going to go all the way to 3A. Oof. Um, Oof. So uh, they'll definitely be 2A, but Depending on how the numbers shake out, they they got a there's a possibility they could go to 3A next year. Okay, which make a lot of people happy. Yes, I think uh, we'll see. We'll see if this works. If it makes people happy or just makes them more upset, who knows? You know how high school folks are. They wear their emotions on their sleeves, and we'll know soon enough. Hey, I uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow in Orangeburg. Thanks as always, and we'll talk tomorrow night. That'll work. See you later. Take care. All right, David Shelton. High School Sports Report, Post and Courier, most importantly here with Sports Talk and the High School Scoreboard. Riley Leonard, Duke quarterback in the transfer portal, John. You just don't transfer out of Duke, do you? We got people transferring out of Harvard, transferring out of Duke. What is going on with these academic institutions of higher education? Whatever happened to wanting an education? When did we lose sight that education is more important than money? Well, I saw today, uh, speaking of that, Matt Rule, I have not seen the whole press <laughs> conference, but Nebraska, Nebraska yeah. head coach, former Panthers head coach, he said today, quote, a good QB in the portal costs one to two million dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seems seems reasonable. And reading an article right here in the background, the Riley Leonard is expected, or Notre Dame is expected to make a big push for Riley Leonard. Uh, I started to look across and ask you the obvious answer there, maybe it's low-hanging fruit, is will he rejoin his former coach, Mike Elko, out at Texas A&M? And Texas A&M, of course, has he announced his offensive coordinator yet? Is he going to take his from Duke, I wonder? Do mm, we know that? I don't know, but I know that former A&M quarterback Max Johnson announced for North Carolina today. Gotcha. So saw that. So that does open up a spot there. They will be needing a quarterback. I don't know what it was like behind Max Johnson out at uh, 
out there. I know their other quarterback, their depth from last year was now at Georgia Tech this Haynes past King, year. Yeah. Haynes King. Mm-hmm. So it might be reasonable to assume that Mike Elko makes a push for him to come out to Texas A&M. And if it's one to two million dollars, that means Texas A&M will pay six. So they seem to overpay on everything else. I wouldn't be surprised if they offer him a nice lump sum. And then Notre Dame might see, of course, after their one year rental, uh, getting a young man from from Wake Forest who was uh, Sam Hartman, who came in and did such a good job this year, although they did lose some games. Can't help but wonder if uh, Riley Leonard might already know his destination. But what do you do if you're Shane Beamer? Okay, now you know Rattler's gone. So you've lost the guy who's taking every meaningful snap for you for the last two seasons. Okay, you've got, you look in your quarterback room, there's a lot of people right mm-hmm. now. There's Luke Doty, of course, don't forget Luke Doty. Um, there's Lenora Sellers. Um, and then there are the others who've been in the quarterback room, but you hardly ever hear of them. So do you feel good enough about Doty and Sellers as your top two? Oh, and you've got Dante Reno coming in. So that's three. Now. What do you do? Do you go shopping for a Grayson McCall or a KJ Jefferson or a whoever? Mm. Because you don't have an experienced quarterback. And then what do you say to the quarterbacks who've been in your program? Well, I know what you say. It's all about competition. If you're the best quarterback, you'll play. But they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear, I love you. Welcome home. A few thoughts. This is what you told me in recruiting. You welcomed me home. You loved me. And you promised me a chance to play. Now, maybe you said I have to compete. I get that. But how can I compete? Where's the fairness if I've been in this program, in some cases, for Doty a half century, it seems. But as long as he's been, or in the case of Sellers, he's been through it a year. Um, you know, how am I supposed to feel when you bring in somebody over the top? And again, the the cold, hard reality is best man plays. And I guess to the fans. They just want a quarterback who can win. And nobody shed a tear for any of the quarterbacks. Nobody shed a tear for Doty when Spencer Rattler came in. You know, Doty was on the verge of being the starting quarterback three years ago. Then he breaks his foot in in practice. He was going to be the starter. And he gets hurt uh, like, what, 10 days or so before the start of the season. Yep. And that derailed that for him. Then in comes Rattler, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, nobody's going to shed a tear for the guys who've been there paying the price when somebody else comes in and takes the job, if that's the better quarterback, if that can help you win. So Luke Doty's thrown 18 passes the last two seasons combined. Of course, obviously, that means while Spencer Rattler was here. But again, I mean, no offense by this, just a genuine question. Has that ship already sailed on him being a quarterback at South Carolina? Because the move to wide receiver sure was an indication to me that there was a conversation again. I don't know it, but it sure seems to me that a conversation was had. Hey, man, we appreciate you sticking with us. We appreciate your loyalty. We'll reward you with an opportunity at a different position. But we have other guys behind you that we'd like to start prepping to replace uh, who's currently there. Yeah, maybe, you know, if you're Doty, maybe you look at the uh, Coastal Carolina situation. That's exactly what I was about to say. He's yeah. from the area, from, yeah. from right there. I think yeah. that would be a good pick. And now with McCall leaving. I don't know exactly the situation behind Grayson McCall with who's might coming be coming back next year for the shots at quarterback. But well, there Luke are other Doty, top quarterbacks in the transfer portal, John, too. There you go. Well, there's an Jared opportunity Gist. for Doty right there. And if he does, if he does want to play quarterback, and I think a lot of folks, myself included, watched him in high school and he was so good, mm-hmm. so good mm-hmm. and showed flashes in his brief moments at South Carolina. To your point, until an injury deterred his career, he was going to be the quarterback, going to be the starter. And now it seems as if, again, I don't know this, but that the Gamecocks moved on from him. Maybe he wants to go take a shot, and that that seems like the stars might align at Coastal. And now to your question about the Gamecocks, what do you do if you're Shane Beamer? Well, I think there's two very distinct lines of thought there. Lenora Seller, looking through the depth chart, I'm going to go ahead and be under the assumption that Doty either leaves or does not come back to quarterback. So I'm, making, I'm saying this with that in mind. Mm-hmm. Lenora Seller seems like the obvious choice unless you want to play true freshman coming in next year who's highly thought of that may be maybe the direction but if you're Shane Beamer after this season not making a bowl game taking a step back from 2022 do you think he'll be on a hot seat next year and if so as a quarterback your career can be cut short at any time sorry as a head coach you can get fired at any time your career isn't that long is he having to think 
for his own future, I have to win now to save my job. Does that thought process come into play in regard to quarterbacks here for Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks next year? Because Lenora Sellers, as good as he is and as good as we all believe he will become, is he going to be that guy next year based on the minimal experience he had this year behind Spencer Rattler? I don't know if the answer there is yes. And if you're Shane Beamer, do you really want to trust that with your head coaching career potentially on the line? Well, I would hope he's not on the proverbial hot seat next year. I mean, he's only three years in to this building process. And to now he will be mentioned on the hot seat because that's the way things work in the media. You have you're in your fourth year. You've had a, a poor third year. You automatically go on the hot seat. But I would hope that administrators of South Carolina aren't thinking that way. I hope they're thinking more big picture. And I hope that Ray Tanner really believes he hired the right guy. Totally agree. And I really hope that Ray Tanner believes that uh, Shane Beamer is building from within outwardly a solid foundation with a core culture that's going to uh, benefit South Carolina for years down the road. So I certainly hope that's the case. We got to hit a break and uh, come back with uh, a special guest in just a moment. And then after the top of the hour, Chalk Talk with Chuck and Ellis. Uh, and then at the bottom of the hour, John Combs, and in between all that, uh, recruiting, and we will get to some of your phone calls. Uh, we do promise that tonight. We will get to it. Phone number 888-898-2525, South Carolina Education Lottery, lucky number. Be back in a moment. I'm attorney Jim Corbett, and that's the sound of a big hit on you and your car or truck. I've been an attorney for more than 30 years, helping people who get injured in car wrecks and truck wrecks. If you have serious injuries, call Jim Corbett, 803 765 2968, or email me at jim at jimcorbettattorney.com. That's C O R B E T T. I don't get paid unless I recover for you. Jim Corbett Attorney, for your best recovery from a big hit, 803 765 2968, or jim at jimcorbettattorney.com. George Bryant here with Tsunami Bar Sports and wow, Tsunami Robbie, there is now an amazing technology that you can use when you train receiving large gain without having to endure pain. Please explain. George, that is the magic combination. I have three simple words to define that entire concept. Stimulation, not annihilation. Regardless of your training goals, there is a level of stimulation that is optimal for your desired gains. Tsunami Bar's flexible bar technology meets these demands because the user determines the level of stimulation with the amount of speed and force they impart into the bar or training device. Hey, this is Phil Kornblut. The Tsunami Bar is a terrific training device, whether you're working on your fitness or your golf game. It's convenient, it's easy to use, and you won't feel beat up afterwards. Be sure to click on the digital ad on sportstalksc.com and get 5% off any order using promo code BBB5. Don't wait. Order today. Discover holiday magic with Founders Federal Credit Union. Now through December 31st, make your holiday shopping merry and bright with our special 7.99 APR rate on select holiday purchases made with your Founders credit card. You need to hurry, though. This rate will be gone as fast as the holidays. Visit foundersfcu.com slash cc to save big this holiday season. Call 1-800-845-1614 for details about credit costs and terms. Hi, this is Billy Downer from the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. Are you looking for a safe place to shoot your rifle or handgun? Did you know that the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources operates four manned ranges across the state in Pickens County, Spartanburg County, Richland County, and Charleston County? For more information on our public ranges, visit dnr.sc.gov backslash shooting. You put in the work for your education. The extra early, extra late, extra, extra work. That's because you understand education opens doors to better pay, better opportunities, and a better you. 
Being educated about playing the lottery is no different. It helps you be a better player, one who knows when to play and when to take a rain check. The lottery's a game, so let's keep it fun. Learn more at sceducationlottery.com slash better you. South Carolina's taste buds have spoken, and they're asking for beef. There are more than 7,800 farms raising cattle from pasture to plate in the Palmetto State. So whether it's steaks on the grill before the big game, sirloin medallions, it for date night, or burgers with a family, make sure beef is a part of your playbook this football season. Smoke, grilled, and slow roasted. Find the best way to enjoy your beef at sccattle.org. Beef, it's what's for dinner in South Carolina. Funded by the South Carolina Beef Council, part of the Beef Checkoff Program. Your home is where your memories live. It's where you laugh and where you love. We understand the importance of the valuables under your roof, tangible and intangible alike. So no matter what's around the corner, we'll be there, offering you and your family the support that's made Farm Bureau Insurance a trusted name for nearly 70 years. You deserve more. You deserve a promise. Learn more at scfbins.com. Call me, Alex Satterfield, at 803-749-9171 for all of your Midlands insurance needs. We are back on Sports Talk. I want to welcome in good friend of the program from Experience Columbia SC. Scott Powers is with us here on Sports Talk. Good evening, sir. How are you? Good evening, Phil. How are you doing? We're doing great. Thank you for jumping on board with us. I know you've always got a lot of things cooking around the capital city sports-wise. What's on the menu right now? Um, well, we're working on a couple of different things. We actually have um, a couple of events that um, I hope to be able to announce soon in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, you know, I, the really the thing that most people are still asking about is the upcoming bid for uh, the NCAA championships, including the men's championship, March Madness. And, uh, we're going to bid on that uh, as well as probably three other sport national championships in both Division One and Division Two with our uh, university partners, University of South Carolina and Benedict College. Uh, so we're going to put those in and have those submitted in time for the February 7th deadline. So uh, that is actually taking up uh, a lot of our time right now. I would imagine. Now, what years are you putting in for for the NCAA men's tournament? Yeah, it's a little different. They, the NCAA has a new president this year, and he changed up the way he wants to do things instead of doing a four-year bid cycle which we've done the past eight years it'll only be a two-year so we're bidding on 27 and 28 um will be the two years that we're bidding on mm-hmm. so and then they're going to make a determination after that um if they want to make some changes and I, I think they will i think he wants to make some changes to the bidding process how they go about uh getting bids from cities to host these championships. Uh, I think he wants to put his own uh, spin on it. And um, so I think we'll probably go back to four years after that, but we're concentrating on uh, two years, 27 and 28. You know, I know after y'all had that great presentation when you hosted, did a fantastic job, and now you've come up short in, in recent applications. And I know you said, hotel space was always something that was an issue is it better this time around Do you have a better argument there um we do we actually have uh there are two different projects um that aren't 100 percent done but i think we'll uh, end up both being complete before 27 and 28 are here so that would be two different uh hotel properties in the downtown columbia area um that that is our belief and that is our understanding uh, from the mayor's office as well as some of the uh, developers in town that those projects are going to happen. So I think that will help us. Um, you know, it, it'll also help that we haven't hosted last time. They also, the NCA takes a lot of things into account. And 
you know, one thing that was going against us last time when we didn't get it was we had hosted in the previous cycle. Mm-hmm. So not not hosting in the previous cycle is going to give us uh, hopefully an uptick and put us a little bit toward the front of those uh, uh, those other uh, communities. But good news is um, we only have to wait two years. Uh, the bad news is, you know, you've got five cities that are vying for those two places. So a um, little bit of uh, uh, good news, bad news there. Yeah. Can you give us a quick hint on some of those other sports you'll be vying for to host your championships? Um, yes. Um, w- with the tennis facilities that uh, Lexington County has, um, we are going to be bidding on the men's and women's Division Two tennis national championships. Uh, we are exploring – uh, women's volleyball, if it could be played uh, in the Colonial Life Arena, Ooh. which would be, um, yes, you know how big college bat, uh, college women's volleyball has become. So mm-hmm. uh, doing that, that's a, a national broadcast on the ESPN family of networks. So that could be something um, if we're able to physically make that happen. We're excited about that uh, to see if that will happen. That would be awesome. I bet you'd pack that place. Hey, Scott, as always, thanks for the visit. We'll get back with you down the road a few weeks. Good luck with these uh, proposals. Hope it goes well because that'll be great for the city and for the state, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, Bill. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Scott Powers, Experience Columbia SC. Hey, man, hope that all comes to fruition. That'd be wonderful. Be right back. By the way, before we do what's supposed to happen here, thank you for pushing the button. I thank you. Programming thanks you. America thanks you. WQXL Columbia W264DF. From the BART Fireside Studio, the solution for keeping you warm this winter. This is 107 The Point. News this hour from townhall.com. I'm Keith Peters reporting. The Israeli military says 10 Israelis and four Thai nationals have been released from captivity in the Gaza Strip and have been returned to Israel. It was the sixth such release by Hamas under a ceasefire between Israel and the terrorists. Israel is to release 30 Palestinian prisoners later. Orna Nutra, who's the mother of IDF member Omer Nutra, says her life has been turned upside down since her son was kidnapped. There has been some progress this week but Omer is still not with us. And the clock continues to tick and not in our favor. Meanwhile, the October 7th attack on Israel by Hamas set off a firestorm of anti-Semitism. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. The vitriol against Israel in the wake of October 7th is all too often crossing a line into brazen and widespread anti-Semitism, the likes of which we haven't seen for generations in this country if ever. Schumer, the nation's highest ranking Jewish official, cautioned progressives and young people against unwittingly embracing bigotry in the name of social justice. A vote on whether to expel Congressman George Santos will be held tomorrow in the House of Representatives. House Speaker Mike Johnson. I personally have real reservations about doing this. I, I'm, I'm concerned about a precedent that may be set for that. Um, so we're, everybody's working through that and we'll see how they vote tomorrow. The vote to expel comes in the wake of a scathing report by the House Ethics Committee that found substantial evidence of lawbreaking by the New York Republican. Arizona's top prosecutor says officials in a rural county who delayed canvassing the 2022 general election results have now been criminally charged. On Wall Street, the Dow by 13 points. More on these stories at townhall.com. Are you looking for a way to preserve our founding history and American spirit for generations to come? Look no further than the blueprints of Liberty Brick. Each brick you purchase helps build Liberty Village, a family destination where youth and families will encounter history like never before. You'll feel a sense of pride and belonging when you see your name engraved on a brick in Liberty Village. The Blueprints of Liberty Brick is a way to leave your mark on the future while preserving our nation's rich heritage. 
Liberty Village will impact hundreds of thousands of visitors, capturing the lives, moments, and stories of the greatest men and women in our nation's founding history. Join us in creating a legacy for generations to come. Visit unitedwepledge.org today to order your Blueprints of Liberty brick and learn more about this monumental project. Federal prosecutors announced murder for hire charges against an Indian man for an assassination attempt in New York City on a U.S. citizen originally from India. We hear more on this developing story from correspondent Julie Walker reporting. The charges against Akhil Gupta were unsealed Wednesday in Manhattan Federal Court. The U.S. attorney for the Southern District says Gupta tried to hire someone to assassinate Sikh separatist leader Gurpat Wan Singh Panun here on U.S. soil. He advocates for an independent state within India and is considered a terrorist by the government there. The DEA says it foiled the plot when a foreign government employee recruited an international narcotics trafficker to commit murder in the U.S. India is investigating after U.S. authorities questioned what it knew in advance. Julie Walker, New York. News and analysis at townhall.com. I'm Keith Peters. On Point Weather is made possible by our friends at Palmetto Citizens Federal Credit Union on 107 The Point. And here's tonight's forecast. Clear and cold overnight with a low tip dipping down to 30. Keep an eye on the pets. Tomorrow, a nice blend of sun and clouds and a bit warmer with a high reaching 59. The rain moves in for Friday afternoon and unfortunately will continue through the weekend. It'll be warmer with temps in the mid to upper 60s. I'm Brian Leonard with your On Point local weather. As a kid, you dreamed of being a firefighter one day. Now, the opportunity is yours. Answer the sound of sirens. Live your dream. Become a part of a team, a family. Visit scvolunteerfire.org to find out more. Welcome back to Sports Talk on the Sports Talk Media Network. You can reach the guys with the South Carolina Education Lottery lucky number, 888-898-2525. That's 888-898-2525. Now back to Phil, Chris, and Pat with the second hour of Sports Talk on the Sports Talk Media Network. All right, welcome in, everybody. Sports Talk, Sports Talk Media Network. Good to have you if you're just uh, joining us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You missed one heck of an opening hour. One heck of an opening act, but act two of Sports Talk tonight's even better than the opening act. In just a moment, Coach Chuck and Coach Eli will be joining us. Another edition of Chalk Talk. This will be the last one before the bowl season. So if the coaches are listening, you'll you'll know our plan. We'll give back to you around bowl time. We get to the heart of the bowl season. Uh, then coming up 7.30, Coach John Combs will join us, talk some high school basketball, also give you recruiting, and we will get to some phone calls here tonight as well. Just a busy, busy, busy show. John Whittle of the Big Spur. We were talking about that Gamecock quarterback room. John Whittle of the Big Spur reported a couple of hours ago that both Gauthier and Bailey will be leaving the program. They're not in the portal, John, yet, but Colton Gauthier is, uh, has graduated, and he'll transfer as a graduate transfer, and Bailey also is leaving. You know, Bailey's interesting. Hotly recruited guy out of Alabama a few years ago, Gordo, Alabama, at one time committed to Oregon, and he had Alabama offers, Auburn offers, all those big-time offers, yet he comes to South Carolina and never, never sniffs it because they brought in a Spencer Rattler. And Spencer Rattler, of course, uh, did what Spencer Rattler did for South Carolina. And you can't argue with that. Would any of these quarterbacks over two years have thrown for 6,000-plus yards and all those touchdowns? I doubt it. Okay, are we ready with the coaches? Okay. Two men who uh, we hope will never enter the sportscasting transfer portal, John. We don't want them transferring to uh, another show, though I do know that Ellis, he double times us by going on other shows, but that's okay. Chuck is all ours. He's pure sports talk. He loves us like none other. As we welcome in for another edition of Chalk Talk, Coach Chuck Reedy and Coach Ellis Johnson. 
Good evening, Chuck. How are you? Doing, doing great, Phil. Doing great. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else wants me. <laughs> you're just, you're... <laughs> Ellis is in demand. He's all over the radio yeah. airwaves. I had to take a second job because of what you're paying me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. In all seriousness, Ellis, you have made a small mint in your days as a football coach. A small mint. Emphasize that word small. Of course, I do know you've had some expenses in recent years. I get that. So, Um, (laughs) All right, let's go to uh, this past Saturday night. Chuck, what'd you see out there? (laughs) Well, I I thought uh, Dabo did a great job of taking his offense out of the game and, and, and just play into their defense. Um, you know, I think basically that was, that was the plan run the football. Don't do anything, you know, that on offense to jeopardize it because there wasn't any way South Carolina was going to score. Um, you know, Clemson's just, just too good on defense. And, um, you know, that was the story of the game. Didn't Clemson didn't score an offense touchdown. I mm-hmm. uh, got three, three field goals. I mean, that was the game, but it put it in the defense's hands and, you know, that's been their formula for the last four weeks and it's worked. And, um, you know, and, 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 it, and it will work against teams that are, not you know, that aren't championship caliber, but if they're going to take a, a step forward next year, they've, they've got to, they've got to get a lot better on offense. And, and how do they do that? Where do they go? What do they do? Well, uh, obviously club has got to get a lot better. Um, you know, right now he, I, I would classify him mediocre. Um, they've got to go to the portal and get a receiver. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, if they don't, then you know, then because there's nobody on on the roster that I've seen, uh, maybe, maybe you know, Cole Turner or somebody we hadn't seen, but there's nobody I've seen on the roster that, that's a difference maker, and and you can't depend on you know the two guys, Wingo and Moore you know, freshmen coming in, you can't depend on that. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's a must for them to go out and find a receiver, um, you know, and, 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 you know, they're, you know, they're obviously they're locked in with club. So he's just got to get better. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you were thinking he was going to make a big step this year, you know, and you really didn't see it. Ellis, what'd you see out there Saturday night? A lot of what Chuck's already said. I, and then, you know, early in the game, we, we talked about how hard it is to play at Williams Bryce, especially at night. The crowd was there. The atmosphere was there. You couldn't have had a worse play than the, the pass lateral, uh-huh. if you will. And, I mean, I'm not a that counts, okay? But it was so close to being forward pass. But all of a sudden, it's six points. Uh, then you come back and they get a pick on the second play, I think, of the next series. So, Clemson is... It sort of got the crowd out of it. But then South Carolina had their one decent drive, I think it was 80-something yards, and, and really looked better overall than, than Clemson's offense. But, I mean, the rest of the way, I don't know, I think it's like seven or eight punts in a row and a turnover on downs. So, you know, the sum total of it is just what you got to say. I mean, their defense front was just so good and, and just overwhelmed South Carolina's offense. Line. And that, that's sort of been the problems all year, you know, the, the pass protection and unable to have football the running game. Uh, you know, at the end of the game, they helped Clemson run 73 plays. South Carolina hadn't even run 60. Mm-hmm. So the, the possession time was just melting their defense. They still played okay, but they gave up over 200-something yards rushing and oh, almost five yards every time Clemson ran the ball, and they produced one turnover. So I, although the defense tried to hold up the end of the bargain, it wasn't anything to write home about on that side. So I know you're very fond of Wes Goodwin from y'all's times together, and he caught some heat, some flack for last year's defensive performance. And then they turn it around this year, have a top 10 defense, if not better. What does that say to you about him and the job? How How would you describe the job he did this year? I think he did a great job. I'm sure he would probably tell you that he felt more comfortable, you know, in, in managing it and then calling it on the game day. But the staff together, another complete year. The biggest the biggest thing is their defensive backs were vulnerable last year. 
they weren't real experienced. I don't know how young they were, but a lot of them were not starters the previous year. And that's where they were giving up plays. And he plays a very aggressive style of defense, obviously. And this year they did play well. The only group of receivers that gave them a really hard time was Florida State. So they're, they're really good and uh, maybe could have done a better job switching it up on them a little bit. But, you know, a lot of pressure up front, really good front. Both years, you know, they had a great front seven, a few different faces in it. But the, the improvement in the secondary, I think, is the greatest difference in their defense between last year and this year. Chalk Chalk, Ellis Johnson, Chuck Reedy. All right, Chuck, let's zone in on the Gamecocks here and what do they do moving forward? They they have so many needs. Um, you can go willy-nilly and, and just blow it up with the transfer portal, John, and bring in as many as you can buy. Um, but what does that say about development? What does that what do you do you even care as a coach? Do you even care what kind of message it sends to the players in your program right now, knowing just how how every how fluid everything is? I mean, you they might love you today and you might love them today, but tomorrow they might not, and vice versa. Well, you know, I, I think they've got to be smart in the portal. I mean, I don't think you go wholesale in it, but but you know, they they you know they're losing their two best players. Um, you know, and, and, and I don't know, you know, now you're going to get Juice Wells back, but, you know, I don't know what the quarterback situation is. I mean, you, you've got the freshman, you know, the, Doty's never even hardly mentioned anymore. Um, you know, so you're going to be, you know, you're transitioning to a brand new guy at quarterback. Um, you know, I think they've got to be in the market. Um, for a quarterback, certainly got to get a running back. I mean, you know, obviously there's not one on the roster. Um, you know, I mean, uh, whatever they got to do, they got to get a running back. Um, and, and, you know, and they still, you know, they're going to need some receivers. Um, you know, they've, they've got a great recruiting offensive line recruiting class coming in now, but, you know, you can't count on those guys to play as freshmen or you hope they don't have to. But, you know, the line sh certainly should be better. They got to get a running back. They got to figure out what they're going to do, quarterback, and and then get some receivers. Um, you know, and you know the the problem they've got. You know, and I heard Coach Beamer saying the program's in the best shape it's ever been. Well, you know, I, I think that might have been a little bit overreach. Mm -hmm. um, you know, coming off a five and seven season and and talking and they got a great recruiting class. Well, they do, but but it's number ten in the SEC. Hmm. That that's the problem. I mean, they got a good recruiting class, ranked number 19. Unfortunately, there's nine teams in the SEC that are ahead of them, that are all getting really getting better players, and Clemson's ahead of them. So you know, it, it's a tough road. I mean, yeah, they're recruiting better, but you know, so is everybody else. And some of these guys, let's admit it, some of these guys who are highly rated four star, five star guys, and they make your recruiting class look shiny. They come in and either A, they're duds, or B, they they contribute very little, or C, they're gone within one or two years. So what do you have left? Yeah. Well, here, I'll tell you this. You, you look at Georgia. You look at Alabama. You look at Ohio State. You can look at Texas now. Uh, you, you know, those guys are in the top five or six recruiting every year. So, yeah, there's going to be some duds. But if, if you're up there every year, you know, getting the four and five stars, there's a reason why Georgia's number one. And there's a reason, you know, why Alabama's always good. And, and again, Ohio State, you can go right on down. And Texas is just getting better and better. You know, I mean, so, you know, you've got to recruit at that level, you know, and, and that's where I see Clemson has fallen off. I mean, you know, three or four years ago, they were, they were ranked in the top five or six every year. And in the last two or three years, they've been, you know, they've been in the in the, you know, ten to fifteen range, and there is a difference, and and you know, and I think it's beginning to show. Mm -hmm. Ellis, Matt Rule said today, and of course, coaches, they they really are, they're really double talking to us. On the one hand, they complain about having to pay this money to the players. They complain about the money going out. Some of them do. They've been outspoken. Uh, Matt Rule said today it's going to cost – well, maybe he wasn't complaining. Maybe he's just speaking out loud. He said it's going to cost about $1.2 to get a 
winning quarterback out of the transfer portal, which is about what, you know, Rattler was getting at South Carolina. So we know what the going rate is. But, you know, when he said that to me, it didn't even shock me anymore. I wasn't like, oh, my God. It's like that's now just the cost of doing business in big-time college football. Yeah, it, I've, I've said it on different different venues. You may have said it on here. People might be tired of hearing it, but it's a chance of just going to eat college football. Uh, you know, all this stuff is going to make about 15 and 20 programs, uh, alumni or boosters or whatever, or fans, real happy. And the rest of them, it's going to be terrible because you listen to those numbers. Any university, any Power 5 university can come up with that money. They can't come up with that money for the whole team. It takes the whole team to win a game. They might have paid Spencer Rattler $1.5 million. Did they get their money's worth back? I mean, I, I, I got to ask. I mean, it wasn't his fault. But if you can't put people around him, go ahead and pay him a million dollars. It ain't going to matter. So I, I don't want to get off on the tangent because I know you kind of asked a question about the NIL. Mm. We, you know, we beat this thing to death, but the fact that they let it get out of the box before there was any kind of control on it or guardrails, everybody likes to use guardrails. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's absolutely mind bending. You've got to go on a transfer portal now and come up with enough money to buy a player. And they ain't under contract. It's, it's worse than the NFL now. So I, I think that and the other thing that Chuck mentioned, I mean, the SEC next year will have 14, 15 schools recruiting over the top of South Carolina. And a lot of it would just be money. They'll be buying them. And, and I don't think they're going to be able to compete with that. Yeah. Clemson, maybe it's in a little bit better shape. But I don't, I don't know if they're going to be able to sustain that kind of thing. I, just, I think it's bad for college football. And it's really – deteriorating college football down in the lower levels. Yet. I talk to coaches all the time. Yeah. Yet, let me, and I'm not picking on South Carolina. They're the ones that put it out there. But, you know, they put out this release yesterday about this new program for their NIL where they've got an anonymous donor who's who's promised to match uh, dollar for dollar all the donations up to a million dollars that come in. So, like, if you put in $50, he'll put in $50, and that'll give you $100 up. He'll do this up to a million dollars. So basically, I guess it's like a million dollar donation. And of course, this is uh, promoted as program saving, program turning, et cetera, et cetera. Like you can just simply go out and take this money and buy players, and that's going to fix everything for you, Chuck. Um, I mean, in this new age of football, is that going to is that going to fix everything? Well, no. I mean, there, there, there's a lot more to it. And- Ellis alluded to this a little bit. You, you know, you 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 got a guy. You can get have a guy making a million or a million and a half. <clears throat> but those other those linemen, they're not getting that. I mean, <clears throat> you know, I don't know how. Thank goodness I'm not having to deal with it. But I don't I don't know how you uh, you deal with that <clears throat> across the board with all your players. Now I I, I think, <clears throat> and again I don't know a lot about it, but I I think a lot of schools. My understanding is, and, and I could be totally wrong, but this this came. Is that Clemson? Everybody on Clemson's team gets forty thousand. So I mean, now I don't know if that's right or not, but yeah. that's what I was told. Yeah. And you know, and so you know, it, it, you've got to do that. You got to do. You got to give, give something to all of them to keep them happy and keep them there. Um, you know, but um, um, but and and the other thing is now every and you alluded to this last year. Every every coach that you know is on the hot seat or or not doing well. You know that's you know they're not getting enough money for NIL. You know that that's that's what they're blaming it on. And um, you know, but you either you either get with it or you're going to be left behind. I mean, I'm like Ellis. I mean, I don't like it. I mean, I, I think it's going to ruin college football. But that, those are the rules. And you know, like South Carolina, they either better step up or or they're going to get left behind. Same thing with Clemson. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ellis, your thoughts? Real quick, yeah. I mean, you, mm-hmm. you mentioned that. You mentioned when you let in the question, this so-called release, you know, put it out in the press and so forth. I mean, that alone tells you that they're behind and they're desperate and they're trying to compete with this thing. And it's a wild animal. And I don't know how they're going to compete with it. Okay. It's, it's no different than some of the other demographics, financial issues and so forth that come along with major universities and where you're located and so forth. But I, 
you know, the fact they're starting a program and this some guy's gonna match this and match that, that tells you they're not getting what they need right now. Well, Ellis, maybe you should write him a check. <laughs> they, if I wrote him a check, they could they could sign me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they probably should do that. I mean, there's a lot of people they should probably turn to to say, hey, come in here and take a look and help us. I think you could do that. Well, I think Clemson should start paying their walk on 40000 a year. <laughs> me. Plus, plus, I got all that money from Auburn, and now my daughter's gone to school over there, and they're getting it all back. <laughs> People need to understand that you have a son who's a walk-on at Clemson, so you want the Clemson walk-ons to get paid as well, right? <laughs> yeah, the truck just said they're all getting 40000 I can tell you one on the side. <laughs> Uh, he'll get his in time. He'll get his in time. Um, before we let you go. Oh, yeah, he will, but it will all come from me. <laughs> Chuck, do you think, do you think, uh, and I'll ask both of you this, um, unless coaches find jobs elsewhere that they want to go to for whatever reason, do you think South Carolina will be changing much of their staff, Clemson changing much of their staff? And same question for you, Ellis. Go ahead, Chuck. I, I, I suspect that South Carolina may make some changes. I mean, you 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 go five and seven. I mean, you know, they need to look at it now. I, I don't think Clemson will make any changes. No. How about you, Ellis? I I would venture a guess. I I just don't know. And I know both these head coaches so well that I tried to get inside their head. I you know, I just don't know. Now, will there be pressure? On either or, and uh, so well, I mean, Shane's not as established as Dabo. I don't think anybody's going to try to tell Dabo how to run the program yet. But if Shane gets pressure and it's a, you know, you, this has got to be done, you know, whatever. But I, just knowing both of them, I don't expect any major changes at all. Uh, last thing, uh, what's your pick for the SEC championship? You riding with Georgia or is is Alabama going to find a way? And what about how they won that game at Auburn? <laughs> My God, uh, Chuck, what do you think? Uh, I, I mean, uh, that's one of the most phenomenal plays I think I've ever seen in, yeah. in college football. <laughs> but I, I, I have to go with Georgia. Um, you know, I mean, they, I tell you what, uh, what they won twenty nine in a row, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, they, you know, I think Carson Beck has really, really come along as as the year has progressed. And, you know, if Bowers is healthy and McConkie's healthy, I mean, they got a lot of weapons on offense, and obviously they're very good on defense. Yeah, I think they just sort of been treading water here for the most part till they get to this this time of year. You know, that Georgia Tech game, I think they kind of slept, walked through that. Uh, yeah. Ellis, what do you think? What do you think of that last? Ellis, as a defensive well, coordinator, would you, not, would you not have told your guys, look, don't lose your man. If you lose your man, don't let him get behind you. If you let him get behind you and he's about to catch the ball, tackle him. Is that what you would have told him? No, I would have told him, guys, we're not going to rush two and ask you all to cover somebody for eight seconds. <laughs> you, if you rush two people in a situation like that. And, and I got as much of this from Steve Spurrier as anybody. Yeah. I had five different things that I would call in that situation. He said, look, just rush the quarterback. Will you please quit rushing three? Yeah. Yeah, they rushed two the other night and spied the guy. What do you think he's going to do, run for 25 yards? <laughs> I mean, what in the world? And that guy's been on the job all year. I hate to do that one, but this is awful, guys. And and, and I, I'll give you Spurrier's thing. You rush five, you put two hanging around the hash somewhere, and then put four of them back down the goal line, he's never going to get a decent throw off. When the ball goes up in the air like that, receivers work on catching the ball more than defensive backs do. It's not a 50-50 ball. Hmm. It, it's a 60-40, it's, it's a maybe even a 70-30 when you let that happen. Mm -hmm. So I don't blame the defensive back. Maybe they can cover him another 30 minutes. <laughs> Bitter. You sound bitter. I was shocked. I really was because they played great defense all year. But hopefully Georgia will rush too and Alabama will, will beat them. And, uh, <laughs> we'll have a bunch of one-loss teams and I want to watch that community sweat because yep. this thing could really get fun. And I, 
But Alabama to beat Georgia would be the first thing. Oregon's going to beat Washington. And then you, I, I wouldn't even put money on Florida State and know I was going to get it back. Uh, that's a dangerous game. But anyhow, you're going to have about five one-loss teams and then Michigan sitting there ready to kick all their ass. I told you all again here. <laughs> Michigan looks good. They look good. I think you nailed it. You might have nailed it before anybody else. Yeah, I missed those other three, but I got Michigan right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to give you a little uh, vacation here. Uh, we're not paying you for it, but, uh, you know, <laughs> you're used to getting walking papers, both of you. So we will get yeah. back with you, <laughs> as am I. Uh, we'll get back with you bowl season. I'll, I'll send you a text. And, Ellis, let's, uh, let's have that lunch real soon. <laughs> yeah. Can you just call it waivers or be traded? <laughs> I've heard enough. We don't need you. <laughs> no, we need you. We, you're wanted here. I know you love Teddy more, uh, and you love being on with Teddy, but uh, we love you more here at Sports Talk. Keep that in mind. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Ellis. Man, I could talk to these guys all night. Ellis is bringing the heat. Love it. But you know what? I listen and I learn. I never thought about that. Did you ever think? Admit it. You never thought that receivers practice catching the ball more than defensive backs. That's why it's not a 50-50 play. It's a great, no, I'd never thought about I, it in I that, never, in that respect. It, yeah. no. mm-hmm. Closest I'd ever thought was there's a reason why you see so many, many drops is they're playing defense, not offense, while they're not a wide receiver. But but no, never thought about it that way. It's all about repetition. And if you're not getting that repetition, you're not catching a couple hundred balls a day, of course you're not going to be yeah. as good at it. Not only did they only rush two, the two that rushed didn't rush. They just danced with the defensive linemen. They were all afraid. He's right. They were all afraid that the quarterback was going to take off and just run all the way to the end zone. Oh, <laughs> crazy. We'll be back in a moment. On Point Weather is made possible by our friends at Palmetto Citizens Federal Credit Union on 107 The Point. And here's tonight's forecast. Clear and cold overnight with the low temp dipping down to 30. Keep an eye on the pets. Tomorrow, a nice blend of sun and clouds and a bit warmer with a high reaching 59. The rain moves in for Friday afternoon and unfortunately will continue through the weekend. It'll be warmer with temps in the mid to upper 60s. I'm Brian Leonard with your On Point local weather. Hi, I'm Glenn Matthews. And I'm Melanie Matthews. And we are the third generation owners of Modern Exterminating Company. In a time when corporate consolidation, high pressure door knockers, and inexperienced startups are becoming the norm, isn't it nice to have an experienced local family owned company that you can count on since 1955? Modern Exterminating has been the local independent industry leader in the pest control business for the last 67 years. Experience the local family owned difference for yourself at 803 765 2315 or pestfreesc.com. With SRN News, I'm Keith Peters reporting. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has told lawmakers that the White House is not seeking to place conditions on U.S. military assistance to Israel. His comments come days after President Biden had signaled an openness to the idea of conditional aid, an idea that has been pushed by some Democrats as the civilian death toll in Gaza from Israel's war against Hamas has climbed. Police say two people carjacked an FBI agent in Washington, D.C., a theft that comes amid a sharp increase in the number of carjackings in the nation's capital. Police say the theft was carried out mid-afternoon on Wednesday. The FBI says it's under investigation by the Bureau's Washington Field Office and the Metropolitan Police Department. Carjackings in the nation's capital have more than doubled this year. More details at srnnews.com. I sure like to brag about good local businesses. Franklin Plumbing and Drain Cleaning is a great local biz. Josh and his team stress customer service as their top priority. Franklin Plumbing and Drain Cleaning came out to my house. I had a toilet that wasn't working right, a garbage disposal that died. They came out right on time, told me everything they were going to do, and explained the price of each repair before even bringing in the tools. I knew exactly what I was getting and exactly what it would cost. Their prices are fair. Their team is courteous and professional. Plus, they did a great job fixing what needed fixing in my home. I am very 
careful about making any recommendations, and I'm thrilled and confident to suggest you call Franklin Plumbing and Drain Cleaning for any plumbing needs. If it's a repair or to replace something, if it's that tankless water heater that you've always wanted to give you that endless hot water and save you some money, they unclog drain and sewer lines and so much more. Online, you'll find them at franklinplumbingsc.com, or just give Josh and those great folks a phone call, 799-2222, that's 799-2222, and tell them you heard about them from here at The Point. Are you looking for free checking and free savings? Dave Ramsey here, telling you to go see my friends at Palmetto Citizens Federal Credit Union. They're not a mega bank that's so big they lose the ability to treat you like a human being. At Palmetto Citizens, you're not just a number, you're a member. Join today at any of their 14 locations or at palmettocitizens.org, federally insured by the NCUA. Hi, this is Chris Neely, Superintendent of the South Carolina Public Charter School District. I hope you'll join Kevin and me each Tuesday afternoon. We'll bring you Kids First, where we talk about educational issues and what we're doing to teach kids the right way. It's Kids First, Tuesday at 530, right here on 100.7 The Point. Hey, honey, I know you're taking some meds for cholesterol. I was reading that if you're on these medicines, you should also be taking some CoQ10. Actually, our pharmacist mentioned that to me already. He called me the other day, and we went through each of our medications together. Really? He called you? Yeah, he asked if I was having any side effects, recommended supplements that could help me, and let me know the risk of mixing certain drugs. Wow, I'm happy to know that True Pharmacy is thinking about us. True Pharmacy, 1628 Charleston Highway, 3217 Divine Street, or visit truerxsc.com. Hey, it's Jay with the Cigar Militia, Columbia's premium cigar store. Have you noticed the change in weather? Some people call it fall. We call it cigar smoking season. Or better yet, it's football weather. Come in and check out our humidor and do what I do and get your go-to stick or try something new. We've got an awesome staff willing to walk you through and help you find your new favorite. And besides, you're going to need some celebration cigars for when your favorite team wins the big game. The Cigar Militia, 1410 Colonial Life Boulevard. Hi, this is Joel Lurie. I'm the host of Health Matters every Monday morning from 9 to 10 right here on 100.7 The Point. Join me as we talk about issues impacting your health and our community. It's Health Matters every Monday at 9 a.m. right here on The Point. Update you on some basketball, and that's going to lead into our brand new segment here on Sports Talk in just a moment. In some college basketball tonight, it's looking like this in Conway. It is Coastal over Upstate 24 21. You've got North Carolina leading Tennessee 23 12. Virginia on top of AM 18 11. Wake Forest leading Florida 17 16. Still to come, you've got Arkansas and Duke. Vanderbilt, Boston College, Florida State, Georgia, Auburn, Virginia Tech. Last night, the SEC won four of the seven games to take a 4-3 lead in that series. Okay, you know, we need to do more on high school basketball in our state. You know, football dominates, but basketball is right there because we are a good basketball state for boys and girls producing the talent. So the other day, reached out to Coach John Combs, now the Athletics Director at Spring Valley. I said, Coach, why don't we do a high school basketball segment on Wednesday nights, once a week, normally at 7 o'clock, to talk about what's going on in high school basketball in our state. And he said, that's a good idea, Corn. Let's do it. So we welcome in Coach John Combs to Sports Talk to talk some high school hoops. Welcome in, sir. How are you? I'm doing great, Phil. Thank you so much for having me. It's a great time for uh, high school and college basketball in our state right now. No question. I mean, you got college-wise, you got 6-0 Gamecock, 6-0 Tigers, 6-0 USD women, other good teams around the state as well. How would you describe the state of high school basketball in South Carolina going into this season? Well, I, I think high school basketball in South Carolina is, is really good. There's a lot of really good teams out there. We have got uh, good individual players. I mean, you can argue, you know, on the girls' side, Joyce Edwards obviously is one of the best players in the in the country. Uh, her team, Camden, has gotten off to a strong start. 
And you got uh, on the boys' side, you know, probably the marquee players, Cam Scott over at Lexington, that's going to sign to go to Texas. Mm -hmm. Man, there's just a lot of really good basketball talent uh, individually and as teams in our state right now. Well, let's start on the boys' side of things. And in your in your mind, uh, regardless of classification, let's just talk in general. Who are two of the three? teams in the state that you expect to see some really big things from as the season moves on? Wow. I mean, when you say two or three, our state's got a lot. I mean, we'll start with Lexington. I think Lexington High School has got a chance to be outstanding with, you know, we already talked about Cam Scott and they've got some other players. Jackson Prunty is uh, is a senior for Lexington. That's getting a, a lot of publicity. I mean, you can't go too far. Start talking about Dorman. I mean, Dorman is uh, our preseason number four team in 5A for the FCBCA. But uh, does anybody really want to bet against them? No. I mean, uh, Tom, Coach Thomas Ryan is one of our state's best coaches. Uh, always does a great job with his team. And, of course, uh, in 4A, you've got Ridgeview is our preseason uh, number one team. And, Coach Josh Staley, and they've got the the, the bash uh, next next weekend at Ridgeview High School. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Ridgeview's loaded again, and uh, they're going to be outstanding. You got Gray Collegiate. I mean, Coach Dion Bethay. I mean, they had an outstanding weekend where they went out of state, and won some uh, big games, and, and lost against a, a top twenty national team in a really close um, basketball game. And uh, we'll even talk about Somerville. Somerville's our number two team in five A that uh, last year was. Uh, had a great year. They're expected to do really good. And, uh, you know, the great thing I love about this time of the year, this is a great week because this is the start of the regular season for basketball, but it's also the end of uh, football season with the state championships coming up. So this is a great time for these high school basketball teams to really get going. Uh, some of them are missing some of their guys. Like <laughs> For us, I know we um, at Spring Valley tomorrow, we're hosting uh, Dutch Fork High School. We moved up our game from Friday night to Thursday night to accommodate the football team played it and playing in another state championship so it's just a, a a great time with a lot of good basketball out here that I'm, I'm anxious to see how it all goes out this year how about on the girls side well on the, on the girls side i mean we mentioned a little bit I, I i don't know who's gonna who's gonna be camden this year i mean camden is looking really strong they uh, they, you know, North Augusta in 4A has always been really good, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, Camden beat North Augusta, uh, you know, pretty pretty easily than what the final score indicated the other day. Malden, who is a are the 5A, the reigning 5A champion, will be really strong. Uh, Somerville High School girls do a great job. Our Spring Valley girls are, uh, I think, are, is a top five team in, in 5A preseason. Sumter's always going to do really good, and Coach Brandon Wallace at uh, Great Collegiate. Um, he, he's got his team playing really well right now uh, as well. He's going to have them back in the mix. And they won a state championship last year. And, you know, it's just um, there's always, it's, it's always so cool. And you know, Aaron Lucas now coaching at, uh, the girls' team at Lower Richland. You know, they're a top three team in the preseason for 3A. So it's, uh, there, there's a lot of really good girls' basketball teams out there. And I, I tell you what, this is, a, this is a basketball state. I know it's also a football state, but it's, it's also basketball. We got great girls teams and boys teams. Well, nothing wrong with that. You can have both, and we're also very good in baseball and other things as well. What do we have? You mentioned the bash, and we'll be talking with folks about that next week. But um, Mm -hmm. what uh, what else is coming up, big event wise? uh, Because we have a lot of that. You know, started with Thanksgiving weekend, holiday Mm -hmm. weekends are coming up. We have a lot of events. What are some of the big ones that uh, you can think of off the top of your head? Well, you know, Cardinal Newman's got a really good one going on this weekend, Friday and Saturday over at Cardinal Newman. Where they, I mean, uh, you know, Hammond's playing it, Ben, ben Lippin. They've got, you know, Brazen Stockman, who's uh, Coach Tony Stockman's son, who's the head coach at CIU over there, played at Clemson back in the day. Um, you know, Cardinal Newman, Coach Phil Dieter does a really good job out there. Uh, Ridgeview's also playing in it. That's Friday and Saturday at at Cardinal Newman, there's some good boys uh, games going on there and mm-hmm. girls games as well. Um, you know, that, that's one of the big ones uh, that I think is a really good one, a good early test. And then, of course, you know, next weekend will be the bash and then won't be long. The Chick-fil-A Classic will be going on. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of really good matchups uh, going on this, this time of the year. 
Well, we look forward to having you with us. And as we were talking, I was trying to think, you know, I always like to have a name for the segment. I've just come up with the name for our segment. How do you like Coach John Combs hooping and hollering? Well, I like the hooping and hollering. I don't know about throwing the Coach John Combs part in there, but uh, the hooping and hollering, I like it. Let's, let's talk basketball. <laughs> That's I, it. A lot of there's a lot of great stuff going on. And how many? How many? How many people had Carolina and Clemson both at six and zero this time of the year? Uh, I and tell you exactly how many. Zero. Absolutely. Zero. <laughs> and they both played. I mean, you think about South Carolina's two and zero against ACC teams. You know, Clemson's got went on the road and won at a very good Alabama team. I mean, I know Clemson's got. Uh, I believe they got Pittsburgh on Sunday or this weekend. So ne- next Wednesday night. I mean, man, that's. Uh, I, I got to. That's going to be a high level game next Wednesday night when South Carolina and Clemson play each other. That'll be a hot ticket, no question. All right, Coach, we thank you. Look forward to this on a regular basis on Wednesday nights, catching up with you on high school basketball around the state, a little college basketball too. So thank you, hooping and hollering with Coach John Combs. We appreciate you, sir. Well, Phil, thank you for allowing me to hoop and holler a little bit about basketball in our state. Thank you got you. it. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to love it. It just hit me. Didn't it just hit me? Because uh, Gavin looked at me like something happened because I, I started kind of shaking my fist like I had made a three-pointer. No, when I come up with an idea that I like, that's my excitement, okay? Hooping and hollering. I can't think of anything better. Hooping and ho- like, What do you think, Pat? Tell me. Give me uh, on a 1 to 10, hooping and hollering with Coach John Combs on a 1 to 10 for a name. What do you think? I love it. It's fantastic. Good. Excited for next week. If you, uh, if you approve them, then I'm good. I'm good to go. Um, shall we do Larry real quick before the break and then we'll come back with recruiting? Yeah, Larry, wake up. Larry, wake up, Larry. Larry's been hanging. He must be mad at somebody. He must have a message for somebody out there. Ladies and gentlemen, Gamecock Larry's been waiting since 603. Welcome in, sir. No, I'm not mad at nobody. Uh, I got my two radios, two phones, and two books. One for 100.7 Tiger Station and one for one, 107.5 Gamecock Station. <laughs> My doctor has said, told me that I would have to go on. Uh, he told me to quit talking so much and, and listen more. So I'm going to do what he says. I won't be able to call in anymore, but I want all the Tiger fans, all the Gamecock fans to know that Gamecock Larry is still can hear, and he got his radio on, and I got two of them, one for each station, two phones, one for each station, two books, one for each station. If I hear anything that I don't like, or if I hear something I love, I'm going to write it down, write the name down, and then when I get well here, they would let me go beat you. I don't know how to say it, but anyway, when I be able to come back, call in, I'm going to... But I, he t- he's even sent his nurse out here. Mm-hmm. They try to tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. Goggle with salt water. Do this and do that. Drink hot tea. I ain't never drank no hot tea. <laughs> but I'm going to have to do what to say. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to let all of you know. Uh, Tiger Bryan, uh, Dan in Georgetown. The guy out in Missouri, the gentleman out in Missouri, uh, Triple T, uh, I don't forget about Keith from Camden, all my friends out of the, and my foes. I'll be back, good Lord's willing, mm. but I'm listening. Remember, Gamecock Larry is listening and writing. Okay? I love all you, y'all and I. Talk later, okay? All right. Have a good evening. Love all y'all. You too, Larry. Hey, we love you, Larry. And please, seriously, anything you need, anything we can do to help, do not hesitate to call us anytime. I know you've got my cell phone as well. Again, don't hesitate to reach out. I mean that. And uh, happy holidays to you. And we'll talk with you soon, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.
Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Take no care. Problem. Take care. Do what your doctors say. Do what your nurses say. Yep. Thank you, Larry. We got to go to a quick break and come back with the recruiting report. That'll make Larry feel better. Larry, stay tuned and listen to the recruiting. It'll uplift you. It will take you next level. We got that coming up. In the meantime, we'll update some basketball. 31-26, Coastal over Upstate. 41-21, Blue Bellies over the Big Orange. A&M leads Virginia 21-20. Florida 25, Wake Forest 23. That's where we are, and we'll be back. Farm Bureau Insurance's agriculture roots and ties to South Carolina farmers have shaped the company's culture and work ethic, providing a unique customer experience. Customers are treated like people, not policies. Now, while other insurance companies may have a one-size-fits-all approach to handling customers, we believe you need to be valued and treated right. Our claims professionals work until the job is done, and our agents still believe in the commitment that comes with a handshake. Call Buddy Bridges and Clinton and Lawrence at 864-923-2174 for all of your auto, home, and life insurance needs. Touchstone Energy Cooperative members save more, more on electricity, and members save more on insurance, groceries, health care, restaurants, travel, concerts, and sporting events through co-op connections. Touchstone Energy is an alliance of the member-owned electric cooperatives, and as a member, the power is yours. Experience the power of co-op membership with Touchstone Energy and find out how much you can save on electricity and a whole lot more at touchstoneenergy.com. This year's Carolina and Clemson jackpot $5 scratch-off tickets give you a chance to win up to $200,000, whether you're a Gamecock or a Tiger. Plus, you can enter your tickets into the second chance promotion for a chance to step on the field or the court to win $50,000, $75,000, or even $100,000. In this state, winning the Palmetto Series does matter that much. So get your tickets today. See SCEducationLottery.com for odds and details. Winning and non-winning tickets can be entered. Second chance odds depend on number of entries received. Football season is upon us, and that means Columbia is welcoming fans from around the corner and across the country. No matter where you're from, Gamecocks love coming together for game day energy that can only be found in South Carolina's capital city. Book hotel rooms, find pre- and post-game activities, and plan your tailgate spread with local favorites from pimento cheese to barbecue at experiencecolumbiasc.com. We'll see you soon, and go Gamecocks! Call Lawyer Lisa. Experience the difference with Lawyer Lisa. Hi, this is Lisa Hosteller Brown. Do you know the difference between a revocable trust and an irrevocable trust? The difference could easily save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in long term care costs. Visit lawyerlisa.com to schedule a consultation today. Call Lawyer Lisa. Experience the difference with Lawyer Lisa. 7511 St. Andrews Road, Irmo, South Carolina. Daddy, you need a trust. Okay, recruiting here on Sports Talk, brought to you by our good friends over at Seawells in Columbia, across from the fairgrounds. The daily luncheon buffet tomorrow should be dynamic. And, of course, Friday is going to be a roast beef Friday. So make sure you get out and enjoy that for only $13. Fantastic buffet, plenty of iced tea, sweet and otherwise, plenty of other soft drinks, great desserts, wonderful people. And if you've got something coming up requiring the very best in catering, well, that is Seawells as well. Their phone number is 803-771-7385, online at SeawellsCateringSC.com. So South Carolina offered defensive tackle Malcolm Alcorn Crowder, 6'6", 295, Butler Junior College, they offered last week. He was not heavily recruited out of high school in Massachusetts. He went to Butler as a full qualifier seeking to develop into a D1 prospect. He did that. 
this season, 28 tackles, seven sacks. And he heard from USC's defensive line coach, Travian Robertson, after he looked at the film, and he offered. And he said they hadn't talked much prior to the offer, but they've been talking regularly since. He's talked to all the defensive coaches. He said they talk a couple of times a week. They talk about the defense. They talk about life. He likes Robert uh, Robertson and, and feels like uh, they're developing a, a good relationship so far. He watched the Gamecocks play Clemson. Before then, he really hadn't paid that much attention, and he liked what the Gamecocks did defensively in that game. He said they like his length, his size, his quickness, and he feels like he's a guy that can pass rush and also stop the run so a coach can put him most anywhere. So – He's not sure yet if he's going to take an official visit this weekend. He said today that the coaches have talked to him about coming in this weekend. He was not 100% sure on that yet. He's also looking at NC State, Cincinnati, Mississippi State, and Southern Cal for future visits. He's also been offered by Florida, Miami, Maryland, Minnesota, Old Dominion, and USF. Transfer news, as we mentioned off the top, Grayson McCall is moving on from Coastal Carolina. Suffered that big hit October 21st. That was it. Didn't play again after that moment against Arkansas State. Finishes his career 10,005 passing yards, 88 touchdowns, only 14 interceptions, 69.9% completion, career quarterback rating of 178.4. He follows another coastal quarterback, Jarrett Guest, who was the backup as hitting the transfer portal, John. Of course, you heard us talking earlier, Spencer Rattler going to the draft, and then John Whittle of the Big Spur reporting that two reserve Gamecock quarterbacks, Colton Gauthier and um, and, 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 and Colton Gauthier and uh, Kip Malabama. Tanner Bailey. Tanner Bailey. Uh, they, too, are going to be hitting the transfer portal, John. Clemson offensive guard Mitchell Mays is entering the transfer portal, John. He played in 32 games in his career starting – Nine started five games the middle of this season at right guard, and he lost his starting job, did not regain it. Clemson today offered offensive tackle Alan Heron, 6'6, 315, a transfer from Shorter University. That's a D2 program in Rome, Georgia. He also picked up offers today from NC State and Penn State. Other offers have come in from UCF, Boston College, Arkansas State, Marshall, Kansas, Louisville, Maryland, Texas Tech, Virginia Tech, Houston, Charlotte. Western Kentucky. Reportedly, he has sent an official to Virginia Tech. He's a native of Jamaica, played two seasons at Shorter. How did he slip through the cracks, you think? Was it just that he was raw coming out of high school, maybe lack of experience? Or how does a guy like that go to a smaller school but now being looked at by such big schools? Yeah, yes and yes. I think you answered your own question. Hmm. Probably hadn't played a whole lot of football. USC offered UTEP transfer offensive guard Justin Mayer, 6'3", 310. He's also got Boston College, Houston, Tulsa, Mississippi State, North Texas, Texas Tech, Vanderbilt, South Florida, and Colorado. And USC offered Princeton transfer. Offensive tackle, Jalen Travis. USC is one of the programs to show interest in receiver Chris Mitchell, 6'1", 175, of FIU. He's transferring. 38 games in his career, 100 receptions. 1,663 yards and 12 touchdowns this season, 64 passes, 1,118 yards and 77, I'm sorry, and seven touchdowns, 1,118 yards and seven touchdowns. Brad Crawford of 24-7 Sports reported USC would be the front runner for Arkansas quarterback K.J. Jefferson if he decides to transfer on three and 24-7 Sports reported Jefferson planned to transfer. Then Jefferson posted on X that he had not made a decision on his plans. Cornerback Kwashid Scott of Marion, a Kentucky commitment, has set officials to UK December the 8th and USC on January 12th. He was in for the Clemson game. He was also in for the Kentucky game at South Carolina, I do believe. That will do it for the recruiting report tonight here on Sports Talk. Be sure to check it out, follow our coverage, follow our reporting on our website, sportstalksc.com. On Twitter, use the hashtag STRecruiting. 
Okay, let me do a couple of other things here before we uh, sign it off tonight because there's several other notes that I wanted to mention. NASCAR has a new TV deal that will run from 25 to 31 for cup racing. Fox and FS1 will have the first 14 races. Amazon Prime will have the next five races. TNT, the next five races. NBC USA, the final 14 races. So you got to be an Amazon Prime member to get five Ooh. of those races. Yeah. ACC individual awards came out today. The ACC player and offensive player of the year, Jordan Travis. The ACC defensive player of the year, NC State linebacker Peyton Wilson. The ACC Rookie and Offensive Rookie of the Year. Receiver, Kevin Concepcion. NC State got some good players. He was electric. ACC Defensive Rookie of the Year, Ruben Bain from Miami. All right. And Tim Beret tweeted last night that Clemson's win over number 23 Alabama was just the second road win over a top 25 non-conference opponent in Clemson history. The other was at number 22, South Carolina, back in December of 2016. Saturday's Ohio State-Michigan matchup scored 19,065,000 viewers on Fox, most watched regular season college football game on any network since 2011. And uh, the South Carolina Clemson game, I was looking for numbers, but that was not apparently a metered game. Nielsen doesn't meter SEC network. So we don't know. They had a whole list of the ratings, the viewers for all the games, but not that one and some others. So that was not included. So who on that? And um, let's see if there's anything else here. That'll do it. Uh, Let's check basketball real quick. At the half, at the half, Coastal leads Upstate 31-26. That will do it. See you from the championships tomorrow night, Orangeburg. And thank you, Pat, Gavin. Thank you for coming in. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow. Someone will be right with you. The point.